Had we not had secrecy, had we not had secret negotiations with the North Vietnamese, you men would still be in Hanoi rather than Washington today. I think it is time in this country to quit making national heroes out of those who steal secrets and publish them in the newspapers. đó là mấy chị ở tù chung hy sinh đó. Nó đánh hy sinh ba chị trong vòng 10 ngày. Ờ đi chôn phải cho chị em tôi đi theo, không biết mã mò sao này tôi về tôi đi thăm viếng hay là gia đình tôi thăm viếng. Nó cho đi. In the summer of 1970, I was working in the house post office, just a staff guy. The guy that ran the post office came up to me and said, "Hey, your boss wants to see you." They were planning a congressional delegation to go visit Vietnam and uh, wanted to know if I would go along as his staff person. And I said, sure. In preparation for this, I began to uh, compile material and briefing books and things like that for the congressman. For my own knowledge, I started reading up more on South Vietnam. And someone, I don't know who it was, I can't remember, gave me this book by Don Luce called Vietnam, The Unheard Voices. The pier that I'm sitting on is called Pier 914. It got that name because 914 political prisoners died in the construction of this pier. Hong Song has got empty beaches, white sand, turquoise waters. Parts of the island are very mountainous. It's the kind of place that, that on the surface, a lot of travelers look for. But it has a very, very sad history. There are some just horrific things that have happened here. There are a lot of people who believe it's haunted by ghosts of the former political prisoners. They refer to them as prisons, but they really were torture chambers. They had American advisors in the prisons, American military who were aware of the conditions, and they really were kept a secret. The horrors of what was going on there were, were kept a secret. And in 1970, a U.S. Uh, government delegation came to see what was really going on there. Sonny Montgomery and some others in the House who were big uh, supporters of the war and friends of Nixon cooked up the Select Committee on U.S. Involvement in Southeast Asia. Congressman Montgomery is the leader of this outfit. Its charge was to investigate all aspects of our involvement in Southeast Asia. Everything. I don't biết cái đường nào đâu. Ở tù như ông tủ, hồi nào ông cho ra, ông ra, ông đánh, đánh, không biết cái đường nào. Còn ở đó chứ đâu. Mẹ Cộng sản ngu dốt cũng cũng quánh. Muốn quánh rồi nào quánh rồi nào. Tom had read a book I'd written and wanted to meet me and wanted to find some of the student leaders who had written a report about Kansan prison. I read the book and I thought, wait a minute, there's something else going on here. These congressmen, I'd know about this. So we get there and I met with Don Luce. I had the embassy track him down and told him who I was and what we were doing there. Don was telling me about his friend Loy had been a student leader. He and his brother had been involved in a demonstration against the war and had been sent to these so-called tiger cages. They're called the tiger cages. They were used to house what they called the most difficult prisoners, those who were causing the most trouble for the South Vietnamese. The students refused to take their exams until their leader, Loy, was let out of jail. They didn't know where he was. So they let Loy out and they told him, you are not to talk about this to anyone because remember, we have your brother here. <laughs> Loy through Don said, look, I don't know if I can trust you, but someone has to know this story. There were civilian prisoners being put there and the U.S. is involved in this. He said, look, I have to trust somebody. I have to take a chance, because they told me they would kill my brother. And he drew me a map. Tôi 
các ông á, người Việt Nam mà thằng Mỹ nó ở xứ nào cho qua đây mấy ông không đánh nó mà mấy ông theo nó lại đánh lại người Việt Nam là sao da vàng máu đỏ đồng loại với các ông mà chị em chúng tôi là phụ nữ tay yếu chân mềm mà mấy ông nở lần nào mấy ông quấn vậy mấy ông có đau lòng không có nó con này dữ lắm nó lấy cái khăn lau bàn nó nhét không lại Lloyd said, you've got to look for these details. And so he drew me pictures of things to look for. Look for this, look for that, look for this, look for this. And he said, on this wall, when you come in on this wall, there's a little door, just a little door. That's the entrance to the tiger cages. So I sat down with some congressmen the next morning, and I said, I'd like to propose that a couple of congressmen go to the island. Nobody wanted to, they did they were over there to see the war. Except one congressman, Gus Hawkins, was an African-American congressman from the Watts District of Los Angeles. He said to me, he said, yeah, well, Mr. Arkin, I'll go, but I needed one other one. And I went to uh, Bill, Bill Anderson. Anderson congressman from Tennessee. He agreed to go. They asked me to go as their interpreter. On the way out, the U.S. prison advisor, Frank Walton. Walton. Red Walton, big, red-haired, uh, big guy. Said that it was a, the largest prison in the free world, and it was more like a Boy, Boy Scout, Scout camp. camp. He said, our prisoners should have it so good. We are talking to him about these stories about the tiger cages. He said, oh, that's just communist propaganda. The flight was on about an hour, and we meet Colonel Levey. We went to the first camp. I'm looking at my map, and I said, it doesn't correspond. Went to the second camp, still didn't match my map. Went to one more camp, and we went in, and I said, aha, this is it. I walked back between these walls, and I turned left, and I look, and there's that little door. I said, Congressman, I found it. I found out where the tiger cages are. Tell Colonel Levey you want to know what's between these walls here. I took loose. I said, come on, Don. We walked ahead, turned the corner, and stood by this door. And Vey sees me standing there by that door. He got very excited. Oh, door permanently locked. No sooner had he said that, and I hear this clunk. There was a guard on the other side of that door. He obviously heard Colonel Vey's voice and he was going to open the door, and the door swung open. And I will never forget Colonel Vey standing there and this look on his face. He just stopped. I immediately grabbed loose. I ran through the, through the door and in, and that's where the tiger cases were. And you could walk down like a catwalk over the prisoners. They were down below us. People crammed into these small spaces. One person had part of his hand chopped off, and a very elderly woman had been blinded from the caustic line. Filthy, dirty conditions. Another guy had his, his head was chopped open. It was terrible. The smell was just awful. I took my camera and I started taking pictures. I just started clicking away. Thu hèm làm gì? Vẫn còn ở đây chứ. 